great to be back with all of you. Thank you so much. I had a joy on Monday. Uh, today, so Monday I talked about technology. Today I'm going to change uh, the focus a little bit. The rest of my life uh, I'm a pastor of a church and so I get the opportunity to speak about a whole wide range of things. But when I am in a setting like this, this is an incredibly unique setting in that uh, all of you kind of exist in a very similar bandwidth of human experience right now, uh, whereas on a Sunday morning I'm teaching to like fifth graders and 90 year olds, and there's a wide range. And so it's fun to be able to kind of zero in on something that is uh, particularly acute uh, at this stage of life. And, uh, and, and what's most acute about this stage of life for all of you is that you are just now in the beginning stages of sorting out that you are actually made for a purpose. You're, you're actually being asked to figure out and make decisions about what it is you're supposed to be and do in the world. And, uh, and, and up until this point through like, you know, all of your schooling, you were kind of told this is what you're gonna do. Here are the classes you're gonna take and then you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. And you just kind of go with the flow and you're told what you're gonna do and you do it. But you're now at a place at the beginning where you get to do what, what you wanna do. And, uh, and by the way, the skills you cultivate now and learn now about how to listen for what God might be asking you to do, you will need them again later. You'll need them again and again and again and again throughout the rest of your life. So this morning I wanna talk a little bit about what it means to listen for God's purpose and the only reason you should uh, pay attention to what I have to say is because I have been through some crazy zigs and zags as it relates to God's voice in my life so I have just a little bit of experience. <laughs> um, so uh, here's something I find fascinating. I find it fascinating that a flower does not wonder what it's made for. I find it really, really interesting that a bee does not wake up in the morning and say, what am I supposed to do? You know, this whole like pollinating flowers and making honey, that whole business, it's not very life-giving for me anymore. Maybe I should take like a web spinning class or Maybe I should like get my wings in shape and like soar above the earth and hunt for rodents. Maybe that's what I should do. A bee does not wonder what it's made for. It simply is born and it's hardwired, its purpose is hardwired. I make honey. That's my job. That's what I do. I don't doubt it. That's my purpose. That's why I exist. I exist to make honey, pollinate flowers, I also exist to, you know, instill low-grade anxiety in humans. It's kind of a side benefit that I get to my job. It's fascinating to me that a bee doesn't need to be told what to do. Now, let's look at a couple of passages from Scripture. I want to show you something. Genesis 12, 1 says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. Next verse. Exodus 3, 4, God called Moses out of the burning bush and said, go, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Joshua 1, 1 through 2, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, my servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I am giving to them. Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to me, go and proclaim the hearing, in the hearing of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord. Jonah 1.1, 1, 1. now the word of the Lord came at once to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. Matthew 4, 19 through 20, Jesus said to them, follow me, I will make you fish for people. And Acts 9, 5 through 6, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So here are all of these passages where God has to tell humans what to do. I think it's totally fascinating that a bee, something as simple as a bee, gets to know exactly what it's supposed to do the moment it's born, it has no questions, it doesn't doubt anything, it doesn't have to worry about what to do, it doesn't wonder about classes, it just does what it's made to do, but we, for some reason, have to be told what to do. 
that it's not just innate. Even if you think you know exactly what you're supposed to do, you kind of wonder, like, is this what I'm going to do the rest of my life? Am I always going to be this? I don't really know. Why is it that we don't get our purpose hardwired? Why is it not baked into us so that we, we never have to ask this question? One of the reasons that all of us have to sort out and discover and uncover the thing we were made for, and by the way, every single person in here was made for a specific set of things, unique to you. God would not have wasted time breathing into a clod of dirt if he did not make you for a purpose. So one of the reasons that we don't know it innately is because of love. Love has absolutely no strings attached. Love has no strings attached, which means you can choose what you want to do. That's part of what love does. It says you get a choice. You can actually choose to do the thing you're not made for. If I want, I can go be an accountant. I would be a very bad accountant, but I could be an accountant. You can actually choose to not do the thing you're made for. That's part of love. But there's another reason that love seems to delight in this discovery process is love loves surprises. God loves to surprise us. So have you ever seen like a a little kid go on an Easter egg hunt? Here's what's fascinating to me. I have two little kids, and we go on, they go on Easter egg hunts, and I hide little things. What, what is amazing to me is that a child can find such incredible delight in uncovering an oblong piece of colored plastic. I mean, literally, even if there's nothing in it, it's just thrilling to discover this egg. So there's joy in the discovery. Now, the, the problem with that metaphor, the idea that that God is like this cosmic Easter egg hunt hider guy, um, is that it assumes that he's actually actively hiding your purpose from you. And he is not. The purpose that you are made for is not hidden from you. So why is it so hard to know what it is? If it's not hidden, what what, what makes it so incredibly difficult to to know exactly what you're made for? The other day, I get in my car, and I'm, uh, I decide I'm going to, uh, I, I put my iPhone in one of these little cradle things that goes through your wireless, you know, like speakers in your car. You've seen these. I don't know what the doohickey is called, but it's one of those. Put the iPod in there, and I decide I'm going to start listening to some really cool music. Some, like, super indie alt, super cool music that none of you would understand. (laughs) Like, I think I was rocking out to Miley Cyrus. You probably never heard of her. (laughs) Party in the USA, anybody? I'm very sad that I even know that song. Um, (laughs) So I'm driving in my car. The windows are down. It's a fresh... Wonderful, warm day, I feel great about life. I'm driving along, I'm listening to some great, cool, super hip, alt indie music. And as I'm driving, I enter the highway. I'm on the on-ramp at the highway, and what starts happening, but the, the sound from the wind starts to drown out the music. So I reach and I turn up the radio as high as it can go, and it doesn't seem to increase the volume at all because I'm going through like wa- airwaves instead of like directly into the speaker system. So, like, there's a limit to the volume, and so what that means is now I'm driving down the road, I've got wonderful, like, fresh air on a beautiful day in Michigan in the summer, which you want as much fresh air as you can get because in the winter it's horrible. And so you're in, I'm enjoying this, and now I have to make a choice. Do I want to have fresh, wonderful air, or do I want to listen to my super cool music? And I have to choose which I want to do. And so what I do is I decide I'm going to listen to the music. And that means that I have to roll up the window, which I do. And in the process, the white noise diminishes, 
and the music becomes clear again. The music never went away. The music was always there. I just couldn't hear it because of the white noise that was drowning out that music. There is a voice speaking to every one of us right now in this very moment. A voice planted by God that is God speaking from your heart, whispering your purpose. The reason we can't hear it is not because it does not exist, it's not because it's quiet, it's not because it's intentionally hidden, it is because there is so much white noise in our existence that we cannot distinguish between the true voice and the multiplicity of voices telling us what we're supposed to be in the world. So think about all the voices that we have in our lives, all of the essentially white noise, and not all of it is bad. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it drowns out the voice that's been given to you. So everything from marketers' manufactured desires, our fears, what our parents told us, what our friends tell us what we should be, what religious leaders keep telling you you should be and think about and do, all of these things become competing voices, white noise to the song that is playing within you. So any meaningful effort to uncover your purpose in the world will mean Learning to distinguish between the white noise of the voices that originate from the outside from the one true voice that is originating from the inside. These are two very different things, and they are easily confused and often confused because those external voices will put on an incredibly spectacular show, and you will want to listen to them, and you will believe that that must be okay. But I'm here to tell you You are the only person who can hear that inner voice. No one else can hear it on your behalf. Other people can help clear away the white noise so that you can hear it. Other people can reflect back to you whether or not you're hearing something, but you're the only one who will hear it. It was made just for you. It is your voice given to you by God. It is not your parent's voice. It is not your boyfriend or girlfriend's voice. It's not your friend's voice. It's not your counselor's voice. It's not your mentor's voice, it's not your pastor's voice, it's not your teacher's voice, it's not your professor's voice, it is not any of those voices, it is only yours. And you're the only one who can hear it. And when you hear it, everything changes. Doubt turns into total clarity. Now, it takes some work. It takes some work to figure out and to discern between all the competing voices you keep hearing and the one voice that is constantly beating like a drum within. So why, why would we embark on this? Why is it important to live the purpose? Why does it matter that we should do the thing God made you for? Most of us think it's because of obedience. We need to be obedient to God. We need to submit to God, and that's really important. That's actually not why you need to do your purpose. <laughs> you don't have to do your purpose because you're being obedient to God. You understand that God loves you and delights in you whether you do what he made you for or not. You recognize that God doesn't actually need you to do anything for him? Not a thing. He's completely self-sufficient. It's like my, uh, when I, sometimes I'll, I'll do like a project around the house and my three-year-old daughter will want to help me with it. And let me just tell you right now, she is not as useful as she thinks she is. <laughs> if I actually let her help me with this project, it will take a lot longer and it might not get done right. But I love how much she loves doing it that I, I involve her. That's sort of like our purpose in God. Like, he really doesn't need us. 
So why, why do we do it then? He doesn't really need us. He's not upset with you if you don't do it. Let me try it this way. What if you had never ever heard of or seen a guitar before and you had no idea what it was made for? Now I'm gonna need a volunteer. I need a volunteer to come on up. You look like a volunteer, why don't you come on up? Why don't you tell us your name? This is Stephen, everybody. Will you give it up for Stephen? What's your major? Uh, business marketing. He's a business marketing major. Stephen is probably a very big man on campus. I bet you all already knew him, didn't you? No? Oh, that's terrible. You should get to know him. He's a wonderful guy. Um, <laughs> what if somebody told you a guitar is actually used as a wiffle ball bat? That's what it's made for. That's why it's shaped this way. And, uh, and what, here's what's amazing. Stephen, if you'd be so kind as to pitch me a few wiffle balls. Here's what's amazing about a guitar as a wiffle ball bat. Go ahead. It works. <laughs> let's let's kind of try and maybe that direction over there a little bit. That's, that's pretty good. That's in the cheap seats. They're all cheap right now. We'll do, uh, we'll do one other kind of, maybe I'll see how good I am. But that's a ground ball. See, and they say that the reason, we'll do one more. Did I make it? Nice catch. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's actually, it works great because it, um, it's a nice wide body so people like me who aren't very athletic and skillful can actually hit the ball and it has a nice sound to it. Um, <laughs> So a guitar is to be used and can be used as a wiffle ball bat. And it works. But if you give the guitar to someone who knows exactly what it's made for, then something happens. You can use a guitar for anything. But when you use it for what it's made for, when you tune it after you've hit a wiffle ball. <laughs> it becomes the most beautiful song use a guitar as a wiffle ball bat and it works fine. The wiffle ball's not upset. It did what its job was to fly through the air. The guitar is fine. It hit the ball. But when you use a guitar for what it's made for, beauty, joy, these are the things that get produced. God can use you for a lot of things. A lot of things. You're probably all good at all kinds of things. And nothing to be wrong with it. But you were made for something specific. And when you do the thing you're made for, it produces in you joy. That's the reason to do the thing you're made for because God wants you to have joy he wants you to enjoy your existence thank you Stephen appreciate it So as you're looking at, what is it that I'm made for? What is it that I'm supposed to do? What is my purpose? 
There are lots and lots of techniques, and you'll be introduced to plenty of them, I'm sure, over the course of a lifetime. My purpose here is not to introduce you to all those techniques. It is to introduce you to one very, very simple concept that I hope you'll take seriously, that you may not have been invited to take seriously, and that is this. Begin by asking yourself the question, where do I find joy? Because that is a signpost. That is an indicator of the thing God made you for. Do you even know where you had joy in the last two weeks? Have you even asked yourself the question, where did I have joy in the last two weeks? Where did I have joy in the last two years? And I want you to know something. When you find the thing that gives you joy, you should pursue it. And then someday that joy will change and then you'll pursue that. Because God's purpose will grow, will change, will develop and evolve in you. So now is the time to begin to cultivate the skills of blocking out the white noise and listening for the song that is playing in your heart for no other reason other than your joy. May God bless you and keep you and give you joy. Now I'd like to close in prayer. Please join me. Holy Spirit, come in power and descend upon these, your children. You made each of us specifically for a purpose. You planted in us a song that has never been played before and will never be played again after we are gone. In each of us is a unique song made and designed only for each of us. May we have the courage to hear it. May we have discerning hearts and ears to distinguish between the legion of voices that beckon us to be something we are not made for. Thank you, God, for the gift of this life. May we live it in gratitude and joy. In your name we pray. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.